Welcome back to the revision series with me Kavya Tendral. Today we'll see about the surgical points in oral cavity. If you have not subscribed our channel, do subscribe for more interesting videos like this and as well press the bell icon so that you will receive a daily video notification. Today this video is compiled with points from oral pathology, surgery and some points in ENT anatomy. Pre-malignant lesions of oral cavity, cervical lymph node anatomy, AJCC staging of oral cancer and primary reconstruction in oral ca cancer. First is the pre-malignant lesion. We basically classify this pre-malignant lesion as high risk, medium risk and low risk or equivocal risk. To make it really more simpler, let us draw it in a graph. So in a graph, here will be the zero. This is low, medium and high risk. Let us classify like this. And now we know lichen, oral lichen planus falls under low risk. So L for L, thereby oral lichen planus will be in low risk. Then is discoid lupus erythematosus and discoid keratotus congenita. Discoid, so it is like some disc. When you try to draw a disc or trace out the shape of disc, it comes like similar to zero. Thereby zero is in the plane of low risk and therefore discoid lupus erythematosus and discoid keratotus congenita are also falling under low risk. Next come into medium risk. In medium risk it is oral submucous fibrosis and syphilitic glossitis. Submucosa is the second layer. First is mucosa, submucosa another layer comes. So it is again second layer. So it falls under medium risk. Syphilitic glossitis is basically a manifestation of secondary syphilis and this also makes us to remember like in medium risk lesion. So medium risk lesion are oral submucous fibrosis and syphilitic glossitis. Coming to high risk, we are more familiar that it is erythroplakia, leukoplakia and canidiasis. An important variety are homogeneous or speckled. In case of speckled erythroplakia, this is the most aggressive form of erythroplakia. In leukoplakia, it is the proliferative verrucous leukoplakia being the most uh, pre-malignant and uh, has a high potential of malignant transformation and in canidiasis, it is chronic hyperplastic canidiasis. And we are more familiar that candidiasis is a fungal infection. Next, we will move on to the AJCC classification of oral tumors. Before going to this, a quick recap about the cervical lymph node anatomy. We know that we are dividing the neck into this compartments like anterior triangle and posterior triangle with some landmarks that is the mandible, mastoid, hyoid bone, clavicle, and the muscles are anterior belly of digastric, posterior belly of digastric, sternocleidomastoid and superior belly of omohyoid. We know the sternocleidomastoid is the key muscle of neck. Thereby this divides the anterior triangle and posterior triangle. Now coming to lymph nodes, the nodes which are present in the submental triangle are 1a, submandibular is 1b submandibular triangle is also called as digastric triangle because this is present between the two belly of digastric. Next coming on to second, third and fourth it is actually present in relation to the sternocleidomastoid. Second uh, group of lymph node or the level 2 lymph node as well level 3 lymph node are present superior to this omohyoid. Level 4 is present inferior to this omohyoid superior belly. Next coming to fifth group of level 5. Level 5 is pre actually present in the posterior triangle. Coming to level 6, level 6 are basically the median or anter anterior group of lymph node. This is also called as the Delphian group of lymph node and one importance is the thyroid gland and the larynx cancer has the first metastasis to these sixth group of lymph node or sixth level lymph node also called as Delphian lymph node. The seventh group of lymph node is basically the mediastinal lymph nodes. This actually follows an order in this fashion. And this is just to remember. Having this in mind, let us go solve the AJCC classification of oral cancers. We are dealing with AJCC of the seventh edition with eighth edition updates. It is tumor node and metastasis part. In tumor part, it is TX that is X it cannot be assessed not TOO for O that is 
adult primary cis that is the carcinoma in situ t1234 to remember the numerical let us remember t is the number 2 has start is starting with t so remember like 2 the number are going like multiples of 2 2 and 4 as far as the size of the tumor is concerned so t1 is less than or equal to 2 t2 is 2 twos are 4 so it is maximum of 4 cm and t3 is more than 4 cm t4a and t4b are saying that the tumor is more than 4 cm and as well it is spread into the local structures like tongue which is resectable whereas t4b it is non resectable spread of the tumor mass like example it is going intracraniumly or uh, it is invading the base of skull and so on this is basically the 7th edition classification but on 8th edition ajcc says that it also includes a depth of invasion of lesion if there is depth of invasion of lesion less than of equal to 5 mm then that is classified under t1 less than or equal to 10 mm it is t2 more than 10 mm it is under t3 coming to the nodes no is the no nodal metastasis to remember the numerically in node we have started with t n m stays right so t is 2 so obviously n follows uh, t so thereby it is 3 and the multiples of 3 3 twos are 6 the numbers are 3 and 6 in n1 it is single ipsilateral and less than or equal to 3 cm n2 a 2 is divided into a b and c n2 a is single ipsilateral but it is 3 to 6 cm n2 b is multiple ipsilateral but less than 6 cm n2 c is single or multiple on the contralateral side but still it is less than 6 cm till n2 it is 6 less than 6 cm whereas n3 it is more than 6 cm to be noted in n2 uh, in n3a it is again single or multiple but it is bilateral n3b it is single or multiple bilateral or contralateral and it is more than 6 cm the update here is they have included the extra nodal extension extra nodal extension is we get that lymph node adhering to the skin if the lymph node is adhered to the skin it is fixed to the skin then it is extranodal extension being present if not there is no extranodal extension next coming to metastasis m0 is no distant metastasis and m1 is distant metastasis the most common site for distant metastasis is the lungs because we are dealing with oral cavity from oral cavity it go to oropharynx laryngopharynx and larynx and then for then to the lungs apart from this the, uh, they also include a criteria of HPV virus positive or P16 antigen present or not under updated 8th edition of AJCC classification staging of oral tumors next we'll move on to the primary reconstruction options this is the basic class uh, tabulation is given in Bailey and Love we'll now uh, remember in a more simpler way i have constructed this diagram to easily remember only the primary reconstruction in oral cancer before going to that uh, diagram per se let us know the abbreviation alt is anterolateral thigh dcia is deep circumflex iliac artery msap is medial sural artery perforator and rfff is radial forearm free flap having this in mind let us go to next picture these are all the list of some uh, primary construction but to remember it let us take like r f f f r for roof f for floor so in roof what we have the heart palate so for heart palate it is r f f f and for floor of mouth for base of tongue for buccal mucosa as well for lateral part of tongue reconstruction we use r f f f okay if at all there is complete uh, or total glossectomy we can use alt so total al and alt even lateral tongue uh, reconstruction also we can use alt to remember lateral and total as al at last so al t is used and lateral thigh flap and next is for soft palate guys see the soft palate is sloping like this and therefore yes yes for sloping basically it is medial sural arterial uh, perforator to remember the soft palate is like sloping so ms ap for soft palate reconstruction Next, coming to mandible, we know the uh, important bone that is fibula is used for reconstruction of mandible. But remember, fee as 
a pronunciation of e that is e dentulous part we can reconstruct whereas in case of dentate part to reconstruct we should be using dcia d for d again dcia what is the dcia is d circumflex iliac artery we are uh, flap we need to use that too uh, it is taken from the iliac crest next on the high maxilla we know crest it means itself high thereby for high maxilla we will be using iliac crest or scapula to concise lateral and total is alt for roof and floor for heart palate and floor of mouth buccal mucosa lateral part of tongue everything we are using rfff dcia for a dentate reconstruction of the mandible and as well the high maxilla reconstruction msap for soft palate reconstruction alternate uh, flap can be that is pectoralis major flap can be used in uh, reconstruction of uh, tongue after total glossectomy also thank you so much for your patient listening hope helped you to uh, easily remember some facts